Welcome to episode four of People Don't Like Us, featuring my cousin slash best friend slash brother, but not really my brother, <laughs> just to be clear, Tyler Mack. And we're going to be doing uh, our episode on video games today. Um, it's my first episode back in, gosh, five months, just from a bunch of different things taking place in life. But uh, I want to just dive right into it. So I brought Tyler on today to talk about our kind of chronology in games through our life and uh, then to for each of us to give off the top five video games of all time. Um, so Tyler, if you want to dive into your video game life, do you remember right. the first video game? and what console pc whatever you played it on um all right so yeah when we were talking about it before i uh you know one of the first things i thought of was my first video game um no i don't know i think um uh i would like to say that my first video game i think was maybe diablo one really yeah yeah because uh kevin would play that all the time you know my right. stepdad right and uh but you didn't play like spyro i thought you played spyro yes. for that okay so i guess spyro would have been before Diablo you know, one, right? I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's let's look it up. Um oh, oh yeah. did Spyro come out before Diablo? Probably not. But I think that you well, were playing. Well it Diablo on one before I know is ninety six. Right. Yeah, definitely Diablo was 96. Spyro, I don't think was before that, but like I said, I don't. Yep, so Spyro was 98, and I definitely remember playing Sky, uh, Spyro and understanding it, you know, and right. like actively playing it. I don't think I ever beat it at that age, but um, I would have been six. Okay, um, maybe these don't count, but I feel like you definitely played some uh, adventure some... kind of games and stuff on the computer before you played Diablo. Uh, I do remember possibly. That. I remember a bunch of adventure type games, just random stuff, puzzles, you know, kid, well, kid, kid I, I mean, skill building games. I mean, possibly. I remember helping my mom play Mist back right. in the day. Right. And I don't remember when that came out, but I never really played by myself. Did you have like Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Yeah, but I feel like that was after. That was definitely after. Like. And I wanted to, you know, like, there was definitely some Nintendo, you know? And would but, it not be fair to say that you played video games with me before you ever had your own system or played Diablo? Because, I mean, you definitely... It would be fair to say that, but I don't would have, have any memories of that. at least Sonic or... Yes, like there was... Okay, games. there was definitely Sonic. I remember us playing Sonic. Um, Man. But Sonic wasn't mean, until later. But that almost right? means that you're your video game history goes as far back as mine because <laughs> really? Sonic is kind of first on my list in terms of games I played. But I mean, I do remember playing some games here and there before that, like Nintendo stuff, but I never had a Nintendo. I also had a friend that had Atari at one point. So I played Atari with him. Yeah. I never, I never had I've one. ever played an Atari um the first system i ever got was sega and and then sega cd when that came out 
Yeah. But I played the hell out of Sonic and I don't, I mean, I definitely, I played a lot of wrestling games. I had football game, baseball game. Um, I had some other kind of like. Okay. Yeah. Sonic was 2001. I mean, uh, sorry, 91. 91. Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, original, so like, the original right, Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog was 91. 91. Within, within a year or two of Sonic coming out, which I mean, I'm sure there were plenty of plenty of games out by then oh dude have you seen um high score on netflix no dude you gotta watch that they that is a really good one um they go into why sega made sonic in the first place and it was to compete with mario and they were like all right well we're gonna make our character cute but cool you know, it's going, to be for, it, it's going to be for older kids. Right. And if we get the older kids to play, then their younger siblings will also want to play. You know, that's funny. That makes yeah. total sense. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. That's like the premise for that. Um, that game that was in Ready Player Two. The, the Japanese game where they when they brought it to America, they took the female character oh, out of right. it. Spoiler yeah. alert, by the way, if you haven't read Ready Player Two. But that's not a big, that's not a huge part of it. I mean, it's, it's, it's. It doesn't spoil the story. It's it just doesn't a small spoil part. the story at all, but it's a, it it's is, one it's of a, the small, small tie-ins. Part, yeah. it, right, it's a small secretive tie-in. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about in short. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so they, they took out a female character, turned it into a male character so that they would connect to a broader audience here in america and that played into the story but yeah that you know that you got to do what you got to do to make that money Mm -hmm. (laughs) especially in the game world i mean can you imagine like take that from uh or transition from that let's let's move ahead a little bit to uh virtual fighter street fighter early days of Tekken, which was mm-hmm. late to the scene, but still had an impact. Yeah, <laughs> a Tekken. big impact. Tekken was one of my first games. I think I think when now, my see, parents we, got me my first PlayStation, Tekken yeah. was one of the games that they got me. Now, see, when you... Um, I do remember that, actually. But see, and when you said Diablo... I was going to say like that, that sounds like probably the first game that really impacted you. Yeah, for sure. You know, something that you like really dug into. Yeah. And uh, so what, what came after you, after Diablo for you kind of on a passion level? Um, well, Something as that you far felt as that video was like games, game changing, so to speak. I guess it wasn't really game changing at that point, you know, like it was just the background what's at that? that point. What do you, what do you mean? What's that? You talking about Diablo one? Yeah, Diablo one was like a background, right? Right. And then when I I still remember when Diablo two first came out. Um, you and my stepdad would, would play all the time, right? right? You had it, he had it, and I would see it all the time. And I don't think I was playing that much. Um, but, and I also don't remember what I was playing at that time. Probably Tony Hawk, maybe, if that's the same time period. It sounds like the same time period. That game falls like that. on my list so hard, like... I don't know if it's top five material. It almost feels like it because there's so much nostalgia in those games. Yeah. Me. Like especially yeah, me the too. first me too. three, really. The first three Tony Hawks were like pivotal in my life. I mean, I started skating and I knew I was never going to be a pro, but it just gave me something to do and enjoy and, yeah, you know, a reason to be outside. And it just, it was awesome skating. And of course, skaters are generally cool people so yeah i found that (laughs) it was was nice um 
so I, I've I've really thought hard about that being on my top five in general. Um, I actually hadn't even considered it until now. Um, I don't <laughs> think it's on top five, but I, you know, it's definitely worth the mention. You know, in it's our also that's one of the first games where I like I used every possible cheat code, but I also, <laughs> yeah. but I also took every cheat code off and I learned how to play the game properly as yeah. well as I, I, I was, could. And I, I was not that super hard. Like, you know, this is pre pre online multiplayer stuff. Like I was trying yeah. super hard to be good, even though it didn't matter to anybody, but me. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Maybe right. for when yeah. like friends might come over or something, I could be like, bro, check out this trick I've been working on for weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah it was it was one of those like even sonic i've i've actually recently got sonic for uh on xbox but it's like it's it's updated but it it does it feel the same a couple of the original levels are still on there i don't know okay that's cool it goes but um it it made me realize how much i never really knew about sonic right I always thought like I played Sonic as a kid and I played it a lot, but I, I never really was good at it. It seems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sonic. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah. like now I can play it and I know how to dissect a level mm -hmm. and Sonic, like the zone that you play in is super layered, like way more yeah. than any Mario level ever. Right. You know, right. Mario's like 2D, you just for the most part anyway, yeah. early stuff. Yeah, on the uh on the, the Netflix show, they said that um the guy who designed the levels designed it after a roller coaster. Right, right. With, you and, know, and just a, with a, the you know, like okay, roller coasters are super fun, right? right? So what if we turn that into a video game, you know? But like the way that Sonic levels are designed is the very top level has a roller coaster. Then there's a next level down that is just a flat surface that goes into holes something else. There's a whole a whole bunch of different stuff on this sub level, and then a bunch another sub level down yeah. that has even more stuff. And there's multiple different ways that you can go about getting all the coins getting to the right? end point. All the yeah. Rings. It, yeah, right. And so it just made me realize one how super freaking complicated Sonic is, and two. <laughs> how much i really never knew about sonic in the first yeah, place yeah they go in um, oh they also go into uh you know the tournament that they had on Alcatraz. god there's a there's a part that comes up um that i guess when i was a kid used to give me like mini panic attacks because i couldn't get past this part but like when he starts to drown there's this sound that goes yeah yeah and then you drown <laughs> and I just, and you, yeah you lose a bunch of rings, i remembered yeah. the anxiety that those moments put me through as a kid because it was uh, hard hang on let me think about situation. a game that gave me that kind of anxiety as a kid well resident evil <laughs> um yeah I mean, I'm trying to think of a, a, a more simplistic game because a game like Resident Evil or Silent Hill is designed to give you to be scary, you know? Right, right. Um, especially if you're a kid, you know? Um, or shit, Silent Hill, even if you're an adult. Um, but... I don't know. I guess, I guess Diablo one and two i was afraid to like play those games by myself in the right. dark you know or right. even just by myself like uh i remember one time i was at your house and i was watching your parents play resident evil and i had to quit to go play diablo to like take my mind off of how scary that game was <laughs> <laughs> yeah no they were probably playing silent hill they used to play that game all no, the time it was resident evil for sure it, it was before they got Silent Hill. They had just bought Resident Evil, and it oh, was okay. brand new. Resident Evil had just come out. Okay. And it was terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> I, they. I don't remember that. I don't remember that, but I I do remember when they got Silent Hill, and they were mm -hmm. like, "You need to go play in your room." 
because yeah, this is for yeah. us. <laughs> right. And they would like, I remember they, they talked about that for years. Um, and then uh, I feel like the scariest one, the scariest Silent Hill, probably the scariest game I've ever played is uh, Silent Hill 4, The Room for PS4. Okay. That was, if I had to pick number one scariest game, that's it. That is it. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, so I want to say Diablo 2 is definitely on my list. Um, because when you and Kevin were first playing it, um, like I didn't, uh, at first, I didn't really get how complex it was, but like, I don't know, as I grew up, I understood more about it. And that's why I say that Diablo one was just background. It was just like my introduction to video games, like, um, and it, it was a familiar world. So when Diablo two came out, it was, you know, I had that, you know, familiarity. Um, so once I got older and I was like, you know, a teenager, I could, I was looking at it in a totally different way. How, you know, you obviously got way deeper into Diablo 2 than I ever did, but um, uh, I feel like Diablo 2 really shaped the way, um, you know, really kind of shaped what I like about video games, and that's character building, you know, right. that's those really important decisions that you have to make about your character yeah you know? and as much as i like diablo 3 it's a super fun game it doesn't really have that because you can change your build at the blink of an eye you right. know um uh yeah on a on a whim on diablo 3 you can just change your build with diablo 2 you yep, make a wrong that decision. wasn't available at first but you could later reset your stats yeah you yeah now if you go back and you, you right. play it like once at you, first, you do the if you, you do the game not. of evil, you get you have to start a new character if you wanted yeah, to respect. Yeah, at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, That's how. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but even now, I remember those days. You know, even now, you only have like a limited amount of respects. You know. Yeah. So uh, you got to be careful, um, and even the speedrunners. You know, uh, I watch a lot of uh, Mr. Lama SC, and. Uh, um, I'm not good at it at all, but you know, one of the things that they do is they start out a certain way, like with a sorceress, for example, like they start out, put all your points into charge bolt, you know, right. they run through the game until a certain point where the damage for, you know, and the damage and mana cost of char charge bolt starts to fall off, you know, right. nice. and then you respec into something else. And I think, I think he usually goes for static and Nova and you know you just run the rest of the game with right that, that and teleport but anyway we'll see when um, it comes to diablo 3 you probably know more than i do yeah probably, probably. I, i've built honestly a, <laughs> a, i've built a couple a couple, a couple. um i've built a couple uh, what i would consider like almost perfect builds on there right um, like see that i you know when i recently most recently got into it i like max leveled and did a you know level 1300 paragon or whatever but uh the time it was gonna take to legitimately get a perfect character was gonna supersede the season and all of that stuff and i just was like i'm not putting in this much effort to have a character rolled at the beginning of the season and just it all kind of fell apart for me yeah i i, I just kind of lost interest in it and went yeah. back to call of duty yeah there there are you know tricks and there's there so, a bunch okay, of tricks so, and stuff that you can do to maximize you know your loot but you know and let's diablo not focus too, too like, much on one series you know with diablo 2 the thing that got me the deepest into it was getting involved in that uh d2 jsp forum I don't really know how I initially got into that, but 
in getting into that, like you could trade form gold for services or gear in the game. And it was all like an honor based system as far as trading your form gold and stuff. But if you, if you like ditch someone on a trade or whatever, then you'd just be banned from the forum and that doesn't do you any good. Right. So it holds you to your honor most of the time. Of course, some yeah. people get scammed, but anyway, um, that really got me mostly into the game because it was an easier way for you to obtain the things you're looking for and in a yeah. legitimate way where you're just trading gear for gear and stuff like that you're not trading for anything that's duplicated or you know none of that stuff it's all found right. gear so would you um, say that diablo 2 is on your list too like my top five yeah definitely yeah yeah, it has to be. It yeah. has to be. I spent so much time learning every facet of that game that it has to be. Um, I, I struggle with whether or not I put it at number one. Really? Um, yeah, just because... I was going to ask you about that. Like, do we have to... Like, are you wanting to say um here's my reason this why this is I number one for me i do i do we it, okay because we didn't actually make a list i still as we unfolded across this episode i want to us individually hash out our actual list okay <laughs> right yeah so, yeah our, um, our number one that that like, does not i feel like oh, our number ones are gonna be hard it's the reason hard. that that does not reach number one for me is the grind because no matter what way you flip it, no matter what kind of character build you're using, this, that, whatever, it's all a grind. You're playing through the same monsters, the same levels. Even if the map looks slightly different, it's all the same elements to the the look of it. You know, it just... Yeah. So the repetition of it um, really... Dude, I really fucking hope that you get uh, resurrected. You're getting resurrected, right? Uh... I don't know, man. Dude, you have to, man. I, I feel like I've played it enough. I don't Dude, feel like they're going to change so it in better. a way that's going to make gonna me It's going to look so like, much better. They're going to have so many different, like, quality of life changes. I enjoyed like, the way it looked while it looked the way it looked when I played it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, I mean, me too. It's I've, still going to be the same recently. game. It's just going to look a lot better. And I, I love that. I love that they're revitalizing it. I, lo I like it for a new age. You know, yeah. a new age of teenagers that can get into it the way that we did. Mm -hmm. um, I love that, but I don't feel like I need to play it again. Maybe, maybe one day when it's cheaper, <laughs> like low key. But you know, I, I don't know. I don't see myself buying it new. Definitely not Diablo Four, though. I have to. Oh yeah, I'm super excited for that. I have super to. excited. <laughs> yeah. Like I've been so but that's vested gonna, that's in gonna the, be a while. I've been so vested in that series for my whole life almost. Yeah. You know, I, I have to play Diablo 4, even if I don't play <laughs> it to the same scale that I do everything else. I All at right. least have to play it through the storyline. Um right. I feel like um Diablo 2 leads me into a good segue, which is shooters. Um, and that might sound weird, Diablo 2 in the shooters, but a game that I know you are not the biggest fan of, but I like for this reason alone, not really alone, it's just a fun game, but Borderlands, like, I know you're not a hu the biggest fan of the um, the cell shading, um, I think that's what it's called, that, that style of graphics but i tried so hard i tried so hard really i absolutely i tried yeah so i know you hard. said like you were playing night after recently. night uh, with my wife after years of trying not to play it like because i didn't like the way it looked because i and i've watched you play it you know like i just i tried man and i yeah. cannot do it it's, uh, it's but you got to you got to admit though. that it's not like, just it's not just the 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 way it looks it's the mechanics of it and everything like you can't really? steady a sniper rifle that shit is like woo, 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 woo. 
<laughs> you got to oh. wait till it hits the head. You're like, oh, man. Oh, I mean, with hard. that, with that, there are, you know, di- different weapons definitely are better for that. Um, and that's kind of the trade off. Um, but the thing that I like about it the most is that character building style. Like in Diablo 2, you have three different skill trees that branch off into each other. And in Borderlands, you have three different skill trees that branch off into each other. And there are a bunch of different, like an infinite amount of combinations of abilities that you can do. Right. right. I, um, I definitely feel that. I, that's even, the part I, I love. I don't know. Because I only play one style of character generally anyway, and I didn't, I also didn't like the options for my style of character, like the, the sniper assassin type. And again, the sniper rifles are never steady. Like that's my style of play and it doesn't cater to that style at all. So it also just really threw my game off. Like I, you know, especially when I'm playing against AI, I want to fucking play sniper. Yeah. I'm going to play PVP then running gun- running and gunning is almost always the best way to play. So even if I want to snipe, I end up running and gunning because you're going to get more kills, you're going to have more interactions. You're not going to get run down by someone else who's running and gunning when you're while you're sniping, shit like that. Yeah. Um so it just that really hurt my thoughts on the game you know okay um but yeah um i also felt super invincible but i maybe i had it on too easy i don't know i don't know i'm not sure i feel like i had it on that game i like the uh, i I was not struggling mm. i like the uh the i think it's the engineer the one with the turret yeah it's badass like that turret super awesome but uh yeah so after i started okay. getting instead of Portland, instead of going into like a full chronology of every game we played let's kind of be more mindful of what games impacted us so we've covered diablo and tony hawk um for me, Zelda came in there a little bit just with Ocarina of Time. Like, I played the hell out of that game. Yeah, DJ. I remember that. And I spent a lot of time doing that. And that I did it. That was, like, one of the first games that I didn't use any cheat codes on. And I wanted to do it all myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was a big yeah. step into legitimate gaming for me, I guess. Um, and then uh let's see i mean i definitely had a stint of fighter games in there like mortal kombat and um you know, you know that's i coming. played the original <laughs> mortal kombat on sega i had it you know i have i had mortal kombat 2 i had uh i think three as well yeah um um and i also had tekken one and two and Virtual Fighter was like my first big fighter game like that because I played that in the arcade. It was a oh, really? sick game, but it was in arcade the first time I ever saw it. And I think it was years before I ever saw it on uh, Sega CD, like a couple years. Um, but then, man, I don't know, like... I, I guess you know those those games as much as I do love those games again it comes down to the repetition of it all like once I've nailed it I feel like I've nailed it and I can nail it every time you know what I mean like I don't I'm over it yeah that's me that's me you know which is why I love like and now we're on the subject of shooters this is kind of why I brought it into this like this is why I love shooters so much because it's just constantly changing. Even if you're playing in the same environments, your reaction, your your new spot, your new angle, your new lane, you know, how you run every game is different. Yeah, that's the way that I feel with Mortal Kombat. Right. 
you know, at a certain level, I mean, I'm definitely, I'm not the best. I'm, I'm really not the best. Plus I like to play when I drink. So that really hinders how high I can get, you know? Right. Um, uh, but I still love the game, you know? Um, and it is like that. It's like every game is different because your opponent is different. And you, if you study the game, you really see those minute differences you know, you see like, oh, this person really knows what he's doing because he's only using safe moves. He's, he knows that this move is safe if I block it, you know, and he's not jumping that much. But then, you know, the, the, then there are moments when you kind of get, um, or I, I kind of get, uh, you know, kind of like streamlined or tunnel vision really into what I want to do I stop reacting start just doing what I want to do and I get my ass kicked you know right and then I take a second and I look like oh he's jumping he's jumping all the time I can punish that you know like and then I turn it around and I win because I I noticed something wrong that he was doing and I you know right and uh so I definitely that's what appreciate I'm saying. Like, how like akin to almost a real fight it can be you know it's because you're waiting for pauses and blocks and you yeah. know do I have enough time to pull off this whole move before a counter or you know what could the counters be all that kind of stuff yeah yeah um but I you know I got a lot of that from League of Legends oh yeah yeah like this poster on my wall uh-huh. is from League but uh you know for viewers who don't know that um so when when you play league and it's all a battle of seconds like that like you have all different magical abilities and this that and whatever you know you, there's i mean god it must be moving up towards 200 characters now that all have five different abilities and yeah um yeah that's it's just an insane number of abilities to have to account for and it it leaves so much variance in how you play Whereas when you're playing like Mortal Kombat, you have 40 characters. What, how many? Um, like, no, less, less. Have they, way have they, less. They, I think it's like 25. It okay. 20, it's like between 25 and 30, I think. Right I was now. just assuming that they would have bumped up the number by now to no. more than 25 or no, so. No, they've, but... they've changed a lot of characters and right. added right. some new ones and kept some classic ones, but. Um, you know, it's still kind of they About haven't the done that. They haven't done that many since um, uh, Armageddon. Right. But just that, my point being that you know, once you know your twenty-five characters to thirty characters, it it definitely takes a lot of time to learn those twenty-five to thirty characters. But I don't know all do, of them. I've been playing eleven for two years. And I know like six characters. (laughs) But that's, I mean, but you know how to fight against more than just six characters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Just because you haven't learned how to play that character. I mean, again, like League, you're not going to play 200 characters. No, I mean. You could. People who play the game can play all 200 characters, but the effectiveness that they show with each of those characters will vary yeah you know what i mean but they've played against them enough and they've played as them enough and like different game types and stuff like that that, yeah you know sure they know how to play the character they know what to build on the character but do they really know how to play the character exactly like like we were saying the other night do they really know how to be (laughs) sub-zero you know do they really know how to be katarina from league like yeah you know do they do they really know what to expect that that character to do against them so that that's where all those the the final the fine differences come from in that game but that's what i was getting at is the draw to that game for me was the the variance the total like every game is pretty much entirely different not just like i mean you're playing in the same lanes the same jungle 
on the same map over and over again, mm -hmm. attacking the same points. But the the fights that you take on every game yeah. are totally the, different. The, yeah, the whole team the, dynamic. The team composition. Yeah, exactly. Like, and Everything is know, totally different. And I'm sure, like, <clears throat> you know, like we were talking about soccer earlier, a lot of times you could have a star player, you know, that can carry the whole entire team on his back. And, Absolutely. And, 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 like, you can be like, okay, this guy sucks, this guy sucks, but, oh, my God, where did this guy come from? You know, right. Like, he's and out of I nowhere can, and just wrecked me, you know, if I could just aid this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, or what you're saying, if you're against that guy. But oh, yeah, I was saying if you're against him, you know, you're with him, you're like, I just like, support yeah. that guy. We'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just throw my stun. He'll make it happen. All right. Yeah. So I know <laughs> league, I know league like took up, uh, like uh, like years like you were on league for a long ass do you still play at all i was on league for six years yeah do you still um, play no not at no. all no i haven't played a single game in two years Just too at dangerous least. for you it's not too dangerous i wouldn't say but i i definitely still at times feel a draw back yeah. to it yeah um but because I've been out of the loop for so long, it lessens that draw. Right. Because it's right. so much more to learn. Like, even all the characters that I do know, everything about, all their stats have it changed. changed. Oh, man. You know, yeah. like, they'll have different strengths, different weaknesses. You know, things get nerfed and buffed and this, that, and whatever. Everybody reacts differently to everybody. Also, like, you know one of my favorite characters lux she was known as a mid lane for a long time but then she got transitioned as to kind of a support and people started playing her support a lot like shit like that changes the meta of the game changes so i have to learn like who's good in support now who's good in mid who's this that whatever plus learn the new characters and honestly because of because of how complicated it gets for them to come out with new characters and have new abilities that react new ways and give people a, a, a new feel when they play this character, um, they get more and more complicated <laughs> as time goes on. Like every new character is a whole very new challenge. And if, you know, they, they make these characters that are like, if you could play this character perfectly right, it decimates, but if you make a mistake, your combo's all whacked out, you know, you're going to get beat. Yeah. So it definitely affects how I feel about going back to the game. Okay. Um, you know, and that also, when I was playing that game, from the, from the moment I ever really <clears throat> started playing that game, like I always would have played Call of Duty <clears throat> instead. Oh, really? Always. Huh. Like, I honestly believe that that's got to be my number one. Like, if okay. I had to pick one Call of Duty game, then I could do that. But ultimately, I would just say Call of Duty as a whole series, as a whole enterprise. I, and I know, understand there's two different creators, three different creators across all of the Call of Duty games. But yeah, yeah. As an entire novel enterprise, I, I, I choose Call of Duty. <laughs> it's just always been that for me. And I, oh, I yeah. honestly, like, as good as I used to be. Uh, I see what you're saying, yeah. I yeah. wish that I would, that, I wish that gaming careers and shit like that would have been a thing back when I was young enough and, and talented enough to possibly make that actually happen. Um, it, okay, it so, did, so it did what would you say is your number then, one? But it was so much more isolated like there were there were still call of duty championships or you know little things here and there even back then but they were so isolated to like premier gamers that got involved uh -huh. in that kind of stuff and i i just didn't i don't know i didn't have access to that kind of thing or yeah nobody ever pointed me in that kind of direction yeah. and it definitely a lot of, a lot wasn't, of people it wasn't people have support 
you know, it wasn't or, a possible avenue I could have chosen for my life that my parents would have agreed with for sure. Right. So it, because it wasn't mainstream enough at all. And, you know, back then they'd be like, what are you going to get like $2,000 for winning? So fucking what? You know, no, it's about prestige, mom. It's <laughs> like, how do you explain <laughs> that? They, they don't care. Right. Should have played, should have played Starcraft. Right. Like 200 grand on the line for any, for some of the, uh, you know, tournaments. That wasn't back then. No, not back then. No. That's what it's, I'm saying. That like, didn't happen until like, a more mainstream like five career, years later. That would have been great if that existed 20 years ago yeah. when I was 15. <laughs> right. Because yeah. I was a lot better back then than I yeah. am now. Um, all right, so if you had to pick a number one Call of Duty, what would it be? A number one Call of Duty? Yeah, which like, Ooh. which was your favorite year? I'd have to say Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. It's like 100% my favorite That would, that would probably be my favorite, too. That, like, Modern Warfare 2 was really good. Either that or Black Ops. Black Ops 1? Yeah. That was good too. I mean, it was so good because of the the three things that they did. Like they did zombies they did, remade from yeah, uh, uh, World at War, World at War, and then yeah. they did kind of what everybody expects you to do: team death, search and destroy, all that. Yeah, multiplayer all that. Stuff. And but then, then they added gun game, and right. they added stuff like the ballistic Six knives stones, and the crossbow and, and the yeah. throwing knives and all right. of that stuff. Right. And it, yeah, it was that just really, crazy. really changed the game for me. But I, I miss the old days where snipers were allowed to be snipers. <laughs> What do you now, mean? Now there's so many different things that will reveal you as a sniper, like the glint on your scope, uh, or you know, they don't give you ghillie suits that actually blend in. They give you like a half ghillie suit and you're still kind of revealed in the front. And it's like it's bullshit, man. Uh, like, I loved the modern warfare two era of like earning your own ghillie suit. Uh yeah. It was that because I never I never had one. You had to have never, a thousand kills with a sniper rifle to get a ghillie suit. And actually, I think it was headshots. Wow. So, yeah, you had to earn that ghillie suit. And mm -hmm. I loved that. Yeah. And, I, you know, once I got that <laughs> Man, that's suit, super man, interesting, though. Like, literally blend into everything. And it made you such a much better Yeah, sniper. but that's super interesting, though, right? Like, like, that... It's super interesting the value that we put on like this, these digital, uh, you know, trophies, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like it, like, but it is, it's there. Like we, we, like people who play games really know, like those, those digital those trophies. Trophies. Yeah. The primal like, and, and if you system. pay for it, if you pay for it, then it doesn't count. It does does not count at all and that's why people hate uh you know pay to win so much is because right, right. is because like you know we love earning those trophies those you know like status symbols that we are you know that we worked hard for this thing you know and it's it's odd to me how it like you know so much resembles real life but it's just a game you know, but it's still, it still gives us that as, as people, as human beings, it still gives us that same feeling of accomplishment, you know, right, right. Uh, it's the, exactly the same, right? Just Absolutely. like, just like, you know, how, you know, people like Joe Rogan and anybody who, any, t any like any kind of like testimonial of hallucinogenics or psychedelics will set, will tell you like the experience of a thing on psychedelics is no different from the actual experience like if you if you experience it then you experience it right obviously like no one can really say if you know if you experience death while tripping it's the same as dying because can't really talk to anybody who's died before <laughs> right but 
you know, I, I don't know. I just found that interesting. Um, all right. So I guess for you, That's how it feeds our reward systems to get exactly these that we exactly. work for. Yeah, we set these these goals in our mind as well. That you know, if they don't set trophies for us, we set our own trophies. Right. You know what I mean? Like if they give us stats, we're like, okay, well, once I reach, you know, this stat, I'll feel accomplished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> once I reach a thousand kills or once I reach a, a 1.5 KD or whatever the. Yeah. But, you know, is. they do, they do, uh, you know, give us things for, you know, reaching that milestone. Like once you get a thousand kills with this gun, it turns gold, you know, like, you know, stuff like that. We'll see another um, thing too about these days is, it used to be that like your calling cards and your emblems mattered because you had to earn them. You had yeah. to pick a, a goal and go after that goal and make it happen to get these cool status symbols. Yeah. Right. And then you mark yourself under these status symbols as now I'm a badass. Look at these things that I've earned, but now they give away shit. And they create all this shit and try to sell it to us. And it's all fucking garbage. I liked in Black Ops how you could make your own emblem. That was cool. Right. See, that was that was a cool thing, too. And I feel like they tried to carry that forward, but they did a terrible job. And they also tried to put too much shit in, like, into Black Ops 4 that was, like, Fortnite-y, you know. No, I never, I never played Black Ops 4. And, Oh, okay. I never, I didn't play, I, I fell off of Call of Duty hard. Um, I played uh, Modern Warfare 2. I played, I played the hell out of that game. Uh, but um, I don't know. I feel like, oh my God. Yeah. So. And you know, <laughs> I just thought of another one that's going to be definitely on my top five. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, because while you, I don't know, I was playing Modern Warfare 2 at the same time, but, and this game came out like way before Modern Warfare 2, um, but Guitar Hero. Yeah. Like I got into Guitar Hero on Warriors of Rock and then I just went through them all. Like I was like I got to get all of them. I need everything. <laughs> right. Um cuz I had never had it, you know, I played it at friends' houses and I wasn't that good or and I would kind of like start to get good at it and then I would go home and kind of forget about it. And then I, I don't got know how it happened, but I'm really sad that that franchise fell apart. Dude, me too, man. Like, I don't know. I love Guitar Hero. <laughs> Dude, love. that game was awesome. That game was awesome. And they tried to do it again, you know, but or I think maybe Rock Band did. But I'm not sure. Like, dude, that game was awesome. So, uh, I mean, it made any, like, so you far, actually on, so play guitar. Me, so let's, let's throw that out there. You actually play guitar. So you enjoy the guitar yeah. itself. But I, for someone like me who always loved the guitar but never could actually play the guitar <laughs> not that i couldn't but i never took the time to learn to play the guitar yeah like it made me feel like i could be a beast on the guitar <laughs> <laughs> yeah and playing it on expert you know you you really get that feeling yeah you yeah it it even if you're completely delusional but then there are people that say that guitar hero is harder than playing a, a real guitar there are people that you mm. know it's i don't know i mean it's, on the it's guitar, definitely but. it's definitely easier than learning guitar because i think it depends what you're trying to achieve on the guitar if you're just trying to learn like chords and basic chord progression and stuff like that then probably so playing guitar hero is more difficult but if you're trying to actually be a performer on the guitar you know something like john butler or yeah you know, like even slash john or butler. you know just whoever the, the, yeah of course the guitarists are numerous but the, who are actually performers but you know what i'm saying if you're trying to get to that level and you're actually 
making the songs that they're putting on Guitar Hero, <laughs> then you're probably better than any Guitar Hero player. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I don't know. Just like the feeling that I would get playing that game, like it, it's not like it's not like playing guitar, but you know, on some level, it is because you know i haven't really studied you know music or anything like that um i just kind of mess around with the sounds right so uh you know there comes a certain point you know when i'm playing that i don't think about what my hands are doing i just listen to the sounds and then all of a sudden the sounds are just coming out of the guitar and i don't even know what the hell i'm doing you know um right. and it, it kind of was like that two with guitar hero i guess um where i wasn't really aware of what my hands were doing i was just watching the screen you know right. and my hands would just do their own thing you know i mean of course once you you know get to those really hard songs you've got to like well you got to break it it takes a long time even on guitar hero to break in that muscle memory that you need yeah. to be able to play it with all the yeah. keys and yeah because that it is different yeah, absolutely and but, then you've uh, got finger transitions that for every different song has different finger transitions mm -hmm. that you have to memorize yeah yeah so yeah um, that definitely and rhythms you know i see oh, what you're yeah. saying though about like kind of just once you zone. build up that muscle memory and you're just playing like you're mm -hmm. not really thinking about what your fingers are doing and you're just reacting to what you see on the screen yeah that's like it's flow it state flows. you know that's flow state right exactly you know it's like yeah trying yeah. to get that perfect score as well there you go like setting those mon like those milestones or those trophies for yourself yeah like, yeah, I mean, I was never, I was never super focused about like high scores or anything like that. Like, I, obviously, I always wanted to like do something better, but I just got so much enjoyment out of, um, just the experience of it. You know, just like playing a song. Like, I want to get all the way through this. You know, and I mean, how many times did like we play these different songs like ties that bind and shit like that <laughs> that to, was the, like one of my main to ones. try to 100 percent these songs i i don't know i don't know if i ever tried to 100 percent it like because that was the whole goal was to or at least i think you were trying to best your percentages well i wanted i definitely wanted to like get the solo down you know right. I, I definitely wanted to get every note in the solo but there was that really fast part that was like i don't know like never gonna have 64th <laughs> you know it, it's six like 64th notes like or even faster like of strumming you know just that really fast and i was like i'm never gonna get every single note of that so just forget about it <laughs> but the fun like it was just fun to play like the sounds and doing the rhythms and the note changes with my fingers the one thing know? i've never understood is like i that on guitar hero i imagine is a lot like when you're actually strumming the string on a guitar and you have to hit all those little bit right the 64th notes that you're talking about like how do you accurately do that with your pick on one single string or even changing strings oh changing strings there is a technique to it um and for anybody who's watching that, this, that, like that, yeah, fast, hang on, like, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. margin for error is like <laughs> there's a <laughs> way, there's space. a way to, there is a way to like um, expand your margin of error, right? Um, and I learned this um, kind of halfway on my own. I was doing it halfway naturally, but I would still mess up a lot. And then I saw, I found Ben Eller. Uh, e-l-l-e-r on youtube uh in his series this is why you suck at guitar right he cool. is the shit because um what i was doing halfway and not knowing it um was like you kind of angle your hand right so if you angle your hand while you're going down 
angle angle your hand like to where you're going out from the guitar right, right. when you're going down and then you angle your hand up when you're going up and you go out from the guitar so that way the string faster well as you, you transition your hand you, too yeah and also you avoid hitting you're not the just string blowing you're you're literally transitioning down and up yeah like, yeah 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 so when i'm, when I'm like changing sense. strings or i'm doing like a on my uh latest recording that i posted on facebook um i'm doing a double stroke on each string as i'm going down and that requires me to go out 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 right you know? right right so that i'm not just going i'm not just like doing this motion i'm doing this motion like right. super fast like like it's like a violinist um, would um essentially with their, i don't know violinist is, is different is di that's different because you have a you have a flat plane on a curved surface so this and then this and then you know what i mean but i'm saying in the same way they gotta hit different angles to hit their yes strings, different gotta, yes yes uh, yeah you gotta angle adjust your is, angle to your pick yes. not just not just strum back and forth or horizontally or however you want you know you got to actually put some angle on your pick yeah exactly kinda. so that's that's how you do that on on different strings right um nice so guitar hero comes in where for you well let's just add it to the list for now i'll, okay. I'll definitely i will get to my list we we are an hour in right well, now i've so. put i've put my number one down as Call of Duty, like the whole entire collection slash Modern Warfare 2. Okay. That's, All right. that's well, where I, I'm I don't know. If I had to pick a number one, I guess we'd have to maybe go with the game that I have the most hours in. Right? That would make sense, right? And I honestly don't know. I don't know because you got. I don't necessarily think that makes the most sense because I no? probably have vastly more hours logged on Diablo 2 than any other game ever. Really? Well, I don't know if you count the whole League. Call of Duty series. League has to be close. Well, that's true. League as well. League would have to be a lot of time. A lot of time. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. League is probably, probably the top. Yeah, I would say like of but, the but years League that I've known my you. Number like, one. League, you, yeah, you raise a fair point. Wait, League I mean, is probably most years. hours played for me. The League is not my number one. League is okay. my number two. Okay. It's going to fall in that number two slot. And then D, right. D2, so, I, I guess the whole collective works of Diablo as well with a D2 aside is my number three. All right, so just to solidify... I got and Diablo I already two. know my number four. I got Diablo 2. Ready to load that shit up and shoot it off at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know your number four? Yeah. All right, hang on, hang on. I got Guitar Hero. And I want to say the whole series because, like, it doesn't matter to me which one it is, you know? Like... But I love all the songs on Warriors of Rock. They were really good. You're saying number um, one? No, no, no. I'm just I'm just solidifying sorry, sorry, it your list. Okay. into my list. Yeah. Right. We'll go one through five after I don't know. Right, right. Bit. Um, so I got Diablo 2, Guitar Hero. And I can't really pick one. Right now it's eleven, but I'm definitely gonna put down Mortal Kombat. Because okay. Well, I, mean, I just you, I love playing that game. You could say the collected works like I did. Yeah. You know, and then with the side of the collected works because I played my favorite of them all. The first, yeah, I re I still remember playing uh, Mortal Kombat Four. Um, I definitely played some Mortal Kombat in the arcade. You know, you played one, one with me, hundred yeah, percent for sure. For sure. Like even if you don't remember, even if you didn't no, I want remember. to play it all, which you probably didn't <laughs> like. Yeah, because I barely did and couldn't teach you how to play either. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. I remember. You played a lot remember... of games like that, just mashing buttons. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember uh, the first time you got Mortal Kombat. I still remember that. It was your birthday, 
and you had got, I think it was Mortal Kombat 3 Ultimate. And because that was the first, I think, I might be wrong about this. I definitely had one. One second. Um, because it was the one with the, I, I know that it was the one with the subway. Um, it was the subway map. Um, and I just remember the subway map. Somebody was playing Cabal because I remember the face mask. Right. And somebody was playing Liu Kang because he had the hat. And I was like, and there was blood everywhere. And I was like, oh, my <laughs> God, what is this game? I need right. to play this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, but then once the, when I actually started to understand the game was later on, on the 64 um, Mortal Kombat 4. The um, very first move I had to learn was how to do the get over here. Yeah. yeah I had course. to. Of course. <laughs> and then, you know, get over here and a trip was kind of the only things I knew how to do for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And an uppercut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at that point, those were the moves. Right. You know? right. Those were the moves. Now now there's like, you know, 20 hit combos and shit. You know? Right. Yeah, it's that, a that totally, goes. totally different world today than it was yeah. back then. Yeah. Back then it was super elementary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder well, okay. how competitive it could actually be. Do you know? What do you mean? The original Mortal Kombat. Oh. They remastered it and just used all the same abilities. Well, I follow um I same follow stuff. uh P and D K and M, which is uh P and D ketchup and mustard. Uh they main um Cyrax and Sector. Um uh and they have, I think, I think it's Ketchup who has the series uh, history behind the warrior, and they go in. He goes into, um, you know, uh, different, um, um, you know, uh, competitive, you know, the the competitive history um, of uh, different characters. Um, so that I, there was a kind of a competitive scene back in like mortal kombat 2 mortal Co ultimate mortal kombat 3 uh days but i don't know that much about it but i think there was a competitive scene okay um i mean i'm sure to some extent there must have been some competitions played but i mean yeah could it actually the, i be feel played? like the competitive scene didn't really explode until mortal kombat Combos. 9. uh once they did the reboot mortal kombat 9 um i would have thought was about 2011 um that's when it really that's when like i think the evo um tournaments like really boosted that game into kind of like the stratosphere you know i would have thought that um oh man what was that soul caliber would i think been, like a big competitive that, driver um I'm that pretty might sure. be an Evo game. I know that I know that Street Fighter, Tekken, um, Mortal Kombat, and now also who's also Nether Realm Studios is Injustice, and right. um, uh, and and also more recently Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, but I mean, like early days of competitive. Um, like Marvel games. Capcom, I'm pretty sure was like a huge competitive game. Oh yeah, that one too. Yeah, uh, for sure. And Soul Calibur. Forgot about that one. And I haven't really heard much about Soul Cal Soul Calibur. Probably honestly. the same era of those games would have been uh, Tekken Four or Three, something like that. And. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I could see all those being competitive, and the Mortal Kombat would have probably been on like five. Actually, or something by then. on that series that I was telling you about, um, a high score. Yeah. There is a, a Japanese dude um, who, in in the modern day, um, is teaching a team of kids to uh, fight um, to play. Um, street fighter um competitively and he, because 
he was working at a company who decided to get into that and they chose him because he won street fighter two back in the day right so there definitely was a scene back in the day definitely for sure yeah that makes sense but but again i'm it not 100 so... sure if it was in north america or not right it would have been so isolated like i was saying that you know only if you were in this forum this small network of people would you even get an invite or yeah. be considered for an invite or whatever you know like hackers or whatever in a way like yeah. you know just hackers find a way to know hackers that kind of thing <laughs> like you just you end up in this this network of people somehow some back door of the internet yeah well his story i think was that he was playing in the arcade right and he would he he was like friends with the owner or like the guy who ran the arcade and um once he started beating that guy at street fighter he like that guy stopped letting him play for free and there was no one else who was as good as him so he just went to like a, like this thing that he heard about you know where there was going to be a bunch of good players and then he ended right. up winning a competition you know a tournament interesting um <clears throat> yeah think about like early days of magic the gathering how that must have been ah uh, yeah you know, before even uh like now you get like a wizard number or whatever it is but um so they like they can track you through your tournaments and all of that stuff we, it's a dci number that's what it's called and uh oh, you said wizard number i was gonna say is magic wizards of the coast yeah it is yeah you're sure same as D and D, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's it. Magic is a perfect segue because I definitely wanted to talk about D and D because I discovered D and D probably three years ago, three or four years ago, and I swear to God, I should have been playing it my whole life. Like, yeah, I agree. And I want to talk about, like, you know, the first thing that I talked about, Diablo, right? Right. Diablo into Diablo 2 leads into, um, uh, I guess, my next game that I was into was Borderlands 2. And then Skyrim came out. And I was all about that. I never played Morrowind or Oblivion. But when Skyrim came out, I got that and I fell in love with it. Um, but I really like in all of those games, Diablo three included, like it was around that time that I was like, oh, even before I ever played D&D, I was like, all these games have a similar thing. And that is character development. Right. You know, 100%. Like, like I love like starting as a character and like developing it, <laughs> developing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> starting as a character and just building like okay you start as a nobody right you start as a right. little nothing i mean literally you start as a blank piece of paper and well you, in D D, &D, yeah, D &D exactly. yeah and, then and that's the beauty it of it up. because it goes beyond diablo it goes beyond the the small parameters that you're given like yeah, yeah you have parameters within the game and some of that can be bent and whatever based on who your dm is but ultimately you have Full creative power especially exactly. over your character's personality and shit like that you know little quirks or yeah i love that stuff i love that yeah, too yeah. and so I, I love i just wanted to, i love yeah, that in ready player to mention, go ahead i just want yeah sorry i just wanted to mention um that like the first game that i remember is probably diablo one um and how that game was directly inspired by dungeons and dragons and it took me like my entire adolescence you know like until my and entire adolescence life, was yeah. over to discover the origin of that and how that is like the ultimate game of what i should have been playing the entire time <laughs> right um, I, I was gonna say i love how he referenced that in ready player two as well that there would be none of the games that we know today in the rpg world without dungeons and dragons yeah 
Yeah, you know, yeah, I love that too. For anybody to shit on that, like to shit on Dungeons and Dragons when you actually still play like Elder Scrolls or something today. Um, yeah, it's the equivalent of like. Lil Xan shitting on Tupac and Biggie, <laughs> you know, what I'm like, like you can't shit on your predecessors and then try to take over what the fuck they did and claim it like you created it or something. Yeah, I you mean, gotta, it, you got to pay homage to. Yeah, I mean, what came honestly, before you? I, I'm, and, I'm kind of mad you you even said his name, uh, like no publicity from us from me at all well but, yeah i feel you on that but i mean it's it is the equivalent of that dumb shit yeah um but anyway um <clears throat> i guess uh, i could have like segued around his name but it was a just, lot easier. you could have just said mumble bullshit right um but uh <clears throat> all right so so, you got your so I got I got Diablo two gu- Guitar Hero in Mortal Kombat. Right. Um. I feel like we gotta put Skyrim up there. Um. And I, I just I just want to talk about Skyrim for a little bit because. Is that what you were saying earlier though about not being redundant because you love Skyrim and you love Diablo? Yes. Exactly. Yeah, whatever, man. Whatever. <laughs> hey, if you're an RPG player, you're an RPG player. There's nothing yeah, really yeah. redundant about that. Um, Somehow, both of us, I wanted to bring this up, and I'll just do it real quick before you dive into Elder Scrolls. Okay. Somehow, both of us avoided the WoW trap, right? Right, yeah. Both of us. Yeah. Now, for yeah. me, it was absolutely intentional because I knew that I would succumb to this trap. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because of the variability that you were just, just talking about, like when you're building your own character, there's so many different options. Yeah. In WoW, that I knew that I would be caught up in that trap, and I stayed right. away from it, even though I managed to get myself snared in plenty of other yeah. traps. Right. I mean, like Conquer. Right. Like. Like Conquer. Yeah, I played Conquer online for another mm-hmm. like two years or yeah, something. Yeah, a couple couple years. Yeah. I definitely put a lot of hours in that shit yeah yeah (laughs) um but yeah and and i I played conquer a little bit and i i enjoyed playing with you guys you know because that's the thing that i you know was yeah i was into the most especially about like diablo you know is that you get to play you know you set up a land party and you play with your family you play with your friends and uh and you build this character right that would that's what i was into right Um, so skyrim you can go ahead and Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, the, the thing that really got me about Skyrim and the why it holds a special place for me is the experience that I had when I first played it, right? Like, I've restarted the game so many times that that has faded now. <laughs> right. Um, but the first time I played it, I still remember, like, like, of course, you go through the whole tutorial thing, right? You go through the intro and, uh, you know, no spoilers for anybody who hasn't played it. I can't think of a single soul who – I can't imagine somebody who hasn't played it right now, but um, – Me. I feel like you played the beginning. No. No? Uh, of Skyrim? Yeah. I feel like you made a character when I was uh, living at Grandma's – uh with y'all maybe maybe i played through the beginning i feel like you did i feel like i might have talked you into it i don't remember it no Touching maybe it was, maybe it's Derek. <laughs> it didn't have the same hold on me that it had on you going through it for a first experience oh well I, I yeah. maybe i don't know why but you know if you compare like how old were you when you played Skyrim for the first time that you're talking about? 19. So you had already played Diablo and Diablo 2. Like, I don't know, man. I I just feel like maybe I'd put so many hours in on those games that it just was like, meh. It's just another RPG for me. Yeah. I guess. 
you know, like all of them are. Yeah, so and I never, I never that, put the kind of hours that you put into like Diablo two, you know. Right. So and like, then, but they're also limited in a way that I can't tolerate anymore. That's why I got so into Bleak because it was so different and like i said even the stats are constantly changing your yeah your your strengths and weaknesses are constantly changing yeah where yeah i get i get that i i totally get what you're saying because that's why i'm saying maybe that lost its allure for me in that regard just you're so limited on your character building, right because in like a in a single player rpg like you build your character over time right you go you go through that grind Right. right where you get to level 20 in skyrim you know, you could get to level 20 in a day in Skyrim, but to get to level 40, that might be two days. And then to get to level 80, that might be another eight days. And then to get to level 100 after that, that's going to be like another two weeks, you know? Right. Uh, if but, you know what you're doing. Yeah, if you know what you're doing. If you, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You've already played through the game a hundred times. Exactly. And now you know exactly what to do to get yes. yourself there in four weeks yeah exactly exactly um that's, so, that's like yeah uh, that's what i'm saying that's what i'm like saying those jokes about mechanics how like you know mechanics can do shit in 30 minutes but you're right, like but you're not I paying for that 30 minutes you're years, paying for the years it took right, to get that. learning how to do that in 30 minutes okay right, i put right. i played this game <laughs> 400 times <laughs> literally built 400 new characters before i perfected this build that's why i used to get so angry with you over diablo yeah i've done yeah. this 400 yeah, no, times honestly so you didn't have to and you don't want to listen to me you want to build your way okay whatever um no like i didn't really understand why you would act that way until i started watching like someone like uh you know mr llama sc when he's like speed running you right. know and like I, I kind of realize now, like, I don't know, I don't know if you could complete normal mode in an hour and a half, but you were probably close, you know, you, you might have been up to like, maybe two hours, normal mode, maybe three. What, like the whole story of Diablo? In normal, yeah. D3? No, D2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like two hours? Like an hour and a half, two hours? Easy, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's not hard at all. Rushing yeah. characters is like the easiest shit. That's actually <laughs> how I made my entire living on D2JSP. Yeah. On that forum. Yeah. I rushed characters and I sold those rushed characters for forum gold. And that's how I geared up entire characters of my own. Right. Rather than having to look for it or to find gear that was worth trading for the gear I wanted you know that was the easiest way for me to do it because i knew the game so well so i just had to get power leveling gear and have a friend available to me that would help me with a with an enchant and then i could run everything by myself like i built the enchantress myself but i had to get my friend the info so he could sign on the enchantress to yeah imbue yeah. my weapons while i ran around and killed everything and leveled up super fast yeah yeah um and cow levels. All right, so I got one more. Okay, you got, okay, you think I, you I do. It. I have one um, like I got literally I, trigger cocked. Ready? All right, ready. hang on, hang on. My, I have, I have four. I have not yet put them in order yet, but I have Diablo two, Guitar Hero, Mortal Kombat, and Skyrim. Those are my four. What is your fourth? All right, I have Call of Duty at the top with Modern Warfare aside. League of Legends, number two, strong. Number three, Diablo series. with. Oh, I know what your fourth is. You know what my fourth is. I know what your fourth is. Stronghold. No, hell no. Stronghold ain't on that list. No? No. (laughs) All right, all right. How I feel about my wife and that I met her through that game has no effect on how I feel about that game at all. Okay, okay. All right, I, I you you are absolutely right. I thought that that did figure factor into that, but no. Okay. Okay. No, I mean, I thank thank God for that game, but right. right. I I I I would credit more to the internet 
<laughs> for meeting my wife <laughs> through that game, then I will credit that game for shit. Right, right. You know, I, I do like Stronghold. I still like Stronghold. I still feel a really strong pull to it because it's so competitive. But I don't have the money to compete on the level that those people that pay money uh, to play. Pay to win. And I don't have the time. Yeah. I literally need all day, every day, so I can defend my shit, so I can fight. So, you know. Yeah. And communicate to your whole entire, life for, for you know, players that court. don't know. Or for, for people who wa are watching this, like, on that game, every minute in the game is a minute in real life. So the game is winding all, the, all around the clock. And people play it globally so you got people awake when certain people are asleep you got all kinds of things going on all right in that game simultaneously all right. hang on you since okay so i was gonna guess but you said that i do know it so i'm gonna pee real quick and i'll be right back and i'm gonna think about what it could be Ten four. so with him gone um i just want to take a chance to say thank you to everyone that stuck with us so far in this episode and in general watching me for all this time and hanging in there with me while i've been away it's really been a lot going on in my personal life um nothing bad everything's good really um just a lot of decisions we've had to make as a family and you know holidays and certain you know all of that played a factor in it the new year and um yeah it's just been uh one thing after the other things are going good in life and kids are healthy wife's healthy happy so we're on a roll um definitely got some things in the works for new episodes coming up i'm going to be doing an episode on music pretty soon uh super excited for that and now we have him back i got it what is it, it? is final fantasy 10 boom <laughs> right in at number four dude right in at number four and honestly the big reason that that still makes it on the list is blitzball yeah blitzball was that competitive thing that was ever changing like the ai was Could decent. You could you play that online? No. No? It was, Dude, they should do that. But that's what I was saying. The AI is decent. Yeah. So playing against the AI, you still feel like you're getting competition. Mm. Um, up to a certain point, though, you definitely could eventually, like, out-level the, the AI teams, and then you're just a monster. Yeah. But uh, it, They should redo was, that game and do Blitzball online. I wish they would. I that would wish be they awesome. Would. I'd play the I'd play the shit out of that. Dude, what's ball online would be great. If you <laughs> really could do that. And actually, uh, semi recently, like shortly after I stopped playing League, I uh, downloaded that game on Steam, and I got all the way back to Blitzball and. I started building my team and even now there was so much more to it that I didn't realize then. And it, what was funny is like back then, I mean, you know, I had 190 hours logged on the game before you saved over my file. And look, I'm sorry, I found, bro. look, I found out <laughs> after the fact, I, I found out like within the last year or so that I could have recovered that file. Oh, really? Yeah. There's some kind of PlayStation buttons that you can hit that if a file gets deleted you can recover the last deleted file huh and i never knew that then of course or i would have just been like okay i'll recover it but i could have recovered it anyway i you know what i think happened honestly was you that played a new game and you didn't know and it was the top save well no i, I feel like i Cause no, I was, I remember I was playing a game on it. I was playing the game and then I got to a certain part, like some part where you're like in this kind of a maze thing and you had to like put these special like orbs in the right places. It's called a sphere trial. 
that, that's what that was it's called a sphere trial that's where you get your aeons and stuff okay well well i was in that thing i didn't know how to do it and i i thought like i had to like back up you know so i like went and i think at that point like i i might have like deleted my save and i might have just deleted the wrong save like right could have been what happened you know well either way it happened but during that time what i was going to say is during that time i had spent hours studying that game because back then we didn't have phones that are our beck and call right yeah but so i mean we had uh i couldn't sit here on some we had guys your website all day reading facts and reading tutorials and this that and whatever about yeah, the yeah, game. Yeah. so back then i had the book yeah about the game and it showed yeah. every character and every character's blitz boss stats and all of right, this shit. right and i would take that to school with me oh and really I would read that in every class <laughs> I would just sit there devising plans and making a team and deciding what I was going to do when I get home. <laughs> and um, I definitely did that with a few different games. I had some, I had a lot of different game books and I'd take that shit to school. Diablo 2 was one of those as well. Um, and, but even after all of that research and all of those hours that I had on the game, I realized now in my thirties that there was still so much more about the game that I didn't realize then. Yeah. Like certain defensive tactics you could use and all kinds of stuff that I just did not know. All I cared yeah. about was throwing the ball to one guy and making him score. That's all I cared about back then. And it worked. <laughs> I mean, I'd score like 10 goals a game or whatever, but yeah, at this point, like I, I built a more balanced team. Um, I mean, I'm sure I still have access to it now, like through steam, if I wanted yeah. to pull it up at any point. So yeah, it was cool actually though, after all these years going back to it and playing it and finding more information about it and it still held up to me. I really yeah. still enjoyed it a lot because That's you can good. copy techniques in the middle of the game as certain players from the AI perform techniques, if you have a player that can learn that technique, you can copy it. And you have oh. to do like a very specific thing at a very specific time in order to copy the technique. That's pretty cool. It That's is pretty cool. cool. So yeah, it, it definitely adds an element to the game. Kind of like, a, like a copycat superpower almost. Yeah, yeah. And everybody yeah. has, everybody like whatever technique it is that you can learn, you set, you have to set them to learn a specific technique as they go into the game. So you have to know that your AI has the capability of performing said technique. Like, like technique being like the copycat superpower. Uh, what, no, whatever, whatever skill they're going to perform during the game. Oh. You have to know the AI has the skill in order to set your character to learn that skill. And then you have to hope that the, the right circumstances take place during the oh. game so you can pull it off so that you have a chance to copycat it oh okay yeah it's cool yeah i mean that's that sounds cool that's <laughs> definitely adds an element to the game that i didn't know about before and learned to enjoy now that you know now yeah. I'm an adult adult <laughs> yeah um that so kind of yeah, makes that, me that, think like that comes in that, at that a really number four for me and like the first time that i ever played the game without blitzball just the game itself like the storyline to that game, I just absolutely fell in love with it. Yeah. The whole time. I've recently, I've recently started watching like, uh, um, like I think, I think I watched like an ASMR playthrough of that game. I didn't get very oh, really? far. Yeah. That's funny. I, I the, actually, now that I recall, the whole reason that I got the game in the first place was so that I could play it with Caroline my wife for the yeah you know, for the viewers um and uh show her the storyline for titus and yuna and the whole love story and stuff because i thought that she would appreciate it didn't turn out that she cared like at all she just it's like watching a movie you know she it gets so late she wouldn't want to play so she would just sit and watch and then there's just kind of like you know, I'm fighting all these battles over and over again, trying to get the storyline 
points in the game yeah. and she'd be falling asleep watching me fight these battles that I'm just hitting AAAAA or XXX or whatever, you know, whatever, yeah. click, 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 whatever I'm hitting. Um, I was playing on computers, so it was probably like space or shift or whatever dumb shit. So uh, anyway, she she lost interest, um, but it still holds up for me. I still loved it. Every yeah. single bit of the storyline. It, it was fantastic. Did you play all the way through it? Out, huh? You play all the way through it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. the, the way it finished out was really amazing. Like, you, you're hoping the whole game that they end up together, spoiler alert, and they end up not being able to be together because Titus is from a different win. If, it, like, if you want to go there. <laughs> like, it, it was very complicated, but he... Was oh, transported. Speaking of from a different win, he, he was transported there. to their win and where by Sin, the overall boss of the story. And uh, he ends up getting swept back to where he was from, I assume. Um, yeah. Or on to. Like, we never know? Uh, we never know? Like, where he goes? It's very complicated, but there is a somewhat answer in final fantasy 10 to uh, oh. the sequel to the game where you play only as female characters you play as yuna and riku oh yeah and, um i remember that i never i never played that game. one but i remember that there was a 10 2 with only female ones yeah yeah, yeah. It, it was actually i didn't like it at first but i went back and played it later when i was like three or four years older and that it was awesome okay. super awesome um okay. even now like actually if you buy it on steam it comes with 10 and 10 too <laughs> oh really yeah yeah and it's like 20 or 30 bucks or something like okay. that but uh not that i'm plugging steam <laughs> but um either way it, it is available uh yeah yeah so um yeah, and you get, like, the whole point of 10-2 is that Yuna is trying to find out what happened to Titus. And uh, okay. it, if I remember correctly, she never actually finds him. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's a very daunting task, and she's haunted by these memories and haunted by, like, this thought that he may still be alive and struggling or this or that. And I, I, man, it's been a while since I've played, but, uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie. That story sounds amazing. It really is amazing. It really is. I, <laughs> you know, it honestly, like it, it kind of makes me wish I was, you know, kind of into the, um, you know, the whole, kind of the the whole like japanese rpg style you know game like right, the turn right, like right. the turn-based style i love um, that actually i really I, love turn-based fighting i d i don't I can, <laughs> as much as i'm like as much as i like um dungeons and dragons the turn-based part of it really kind of ir still irks me you know like i know that like you know it's very similar uh, you know stuff with you know the uh it's exactly the same thing the, <laughs> it's exactly I mean, the you're same right. you're right. it's exactly you're right. the same you're right it is it is very much the same thing and it's and you plan um, for your turn and you plan what to do and if you don't make the right move sometimes you're gonna die right but sometimes <laughs> you know in the only difference is that with um you know certain abilities and spells with um uh in in dungeons and dragons you are allowed a lot more creativity and a lot more imagination, right? Yeah, of course. Like, well, that's what I was saying so about like, being limited okay, so to I the parameters fly. of an RPG. 
right right so i want to fly right so i want to fly and while i want to fly around him and like i just want to fly around him while he's attacking me making it harder for him to attack me so and i need you to do an agility check <laughs> i mean well that you know that that could be it or right you know it could be a magic you know an arcana check or it could be you know any kind of a check but some dms are just like no like you know it it for that kind of a thing it really depends on your dm yeah you know? definitely um, you know, your creativity is definitely limited to what your dm is capable of or uh, or willing to allow to. right yeah. yeah for sure um I've I've definitely played D and D with some guys who are like super strict about exactly the rules, um, but then I've played with some who can adapt the rules fairly. Yeah, you know what and I mean. I feel okay, like if you're gonna take this positive thing, then you've got to take this negative thing. Or yes. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of the best way to go about it, especially between these three negative things and you're going to have one of these negative things as a counterbalance to your awesome skill, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I definitely subscribe. I definitely uh, subscribe to the rule of cool, you know, where like if what you're doing like kind of abides by the rules maybe bends them a little bit, but is super awesome, you know? Like, I'll give you all the normal rules. Like, like if you say, so let's, I'll give you an example. I was running a game with um, uh, Josh and Patrick, and they just, and there was a flying enemy, right? And they couldn't get to him. Like nobody could really, nobody had any really ranged attacks. We didn't have like a rogue or a spellcaster, um, and so what they decided is that we had one really strong character and one kind of like sneaky character, and it was like, okay, well, I'm gonna, gonna run at him. <laughs> I'm gonna run at him. He's gonna take his shield and. Like, I'm going to jump onto his shield, and he's going to throw me up in the air. And I was like, wow, okay, I'm going to give you all the roles you need to do this, and if it fucking happens, then it happens, you know? Mm. Like, all right, so you make a dexterity roll to see if you can handle getting thrown off of his shield you make a strength roll to see if you can throw him you actually throw him up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then after and then he hit him you know and you still have to roll to hit after you know once you get up in the air right, you know right. and he hit him and i he hit him may, with like some decent i may damage. or may not have fudged the roll just so that he fucking killed him right in the oh, air okay, okay. <laughs> But you know, then. But that's that's a choice you make as a DM in to keep things fun as well, right? Yeah. Like the fact is, you actually landed the roll to make it. Fuck the damage, you kill him. Yeah, fuck it, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I that's, can't that's believe you actually. Cool, you know, I, I can't believe you did that without busting your face on his shield. <laughs> you did it. You did yeah. it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> All right, so but I got four. Makes a good you got four. I have, I have, I think I have my one through four right here. Okay, well, I don't know you what order come up with yet. your order. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know, I don't know what order they're in yet, but I'm, I can be pretty certain that if I haven't thought of number five, it's not in my top four, right? So. Exactly, that's, that's why I put Final Fantasy right there on number four. And now <laughs> I'm trying to think what's my number five. I don't know if it'll be. Ooh, that's a good one too. To Shit. be fair, I mean, if you want to go by like hours played, like you were saying, then Stronghold almost has to be my number five because I have put that much time in that game. Because I had like months where I spent sixteen hours a day playing that game or more. Damn. 
even even when I was at work at a certain point, I was on TeamSpeak on my phone all day, on Raid Call on my phone all day, listening to people tell me what was going on and making decisions actively because I was a faction leader. Yeah you know and involved in houses and all the politics and stuff like you got to be there to fight the battles for your guys who aren't online or who are online and are dealing with issues and shit so um yeah i mean i put in a devastating amount of hours on that game i mean to the point that my wife who i met playing the game was like you're putting in too many hours on this fucking game <laughs> um yeah definitely oh you know what oh man i feel like i gotta put it in there what is that that five slot it's gonna go to war rock oh and the reason the basis for my putting that in the five slot and for those that don't know war rock is a first person shooter and it was made by some off the mainstream gaming company, but it existed in Korea and it existed here, but they were two different servers. And so I learned about it in Korea and I got really good at playing it in Korea with Korean players. And then I came here and everybody sucked. So I was really, really good. <laughs> and I put in a lot of time on that game as well. And uh, that game was really what spurred my interest in it, first person shooters. Because I played okay. that before Call of Duty 4. Yeah. Um, so, and that game also is kind of what made me not a god, but like really really good at, at shooters at shooters yeah okay as a whole like it, it, it taught me everything i needed to know about the strategies behind running a map you know what i mean like timing where to be yeah when to be there yeah yeah and uh, um pushing the envelope to make things happen in a split second you know and then plus that had like a very unique fighting style where you had to fight by the pixel like people were that good that you literally had to be like on the right pixel to get a shot off before somebody else and stuff so it it brought a fineness to the ability that I don't think even exists or or is harder to find these days in, in these games because they don't move the same, right? Back yeah. then it was pixel-based. Now it's, it's still pixel-based, but it doesn't feel that way because your pixels are shaped differently. It's much more fluid today. So yeah. instead of fighting like on a seam, we're fighting within a little window. Hmm. So that rounds out my top five. Um, you know, I think we've already thrown out some honorable mentions. Tony Hawk, definitely like big influence. Yeah, for me. I've got I've got some more honorable mentions too. Um, as silly as it sounds, I really loved the old NASCAR games <laughs> that oh, I really? used to play as well. Yeah, man. Like, I got tons and tons of enjoyment out of, like, learning the tracks and how to run each track and stuff. And I've been playing this newer NASCAR game recently. And, like, there are no tutorials on this shit at all. So you got to figure it out. Oh, really? Thick. And, like, I put this shit on easy. So my brakes are being helped my steering's being helped everything's being helped and i can't figure this fucking game out man <laughs> literally gonna have to resort to going to youtube and watching some stuff and figuring yeah, yeah. out how to yeah. <laughs> you know thankfully we have that available to us that, so. right right um all right so run through your list real quick 
so Call of Duty, number one. Number two, League of Legends, number three, Diablo, number four, Final Fantasy X, number five, War Rock. All right. So in fairness, I have essentially the same amount, if not more, redundancy than you do, because I got two first-person shooters in there, two RPGs. I mean, a MOBA doesn't really necessarily count as an RPG, but it is. It's just a of competitive based RPG. <laughs> yeah. In a way, I mean you're you're picking your character based on a play style or a role that you like to fill on a team, you know. Right. Right. Um All right. So Hang on. I still don't have my number five set in stone. Um, because of redundancy, I am not going to pick The Witcher 3 as my number five. Okay. But I do know that you love that game. So Yeah, I, mean, I love that game. To anyone who hasn't played that game, fucking play it. Because that is a really great game, honestly. Um, but it's because of redundancy and because your character already has a name. Yep. Um, the same is true for me with two human. I was yeah. just thinking that same thing. Like, I, I know you remember two human. I used to preach it to you. We got it yeah. at one point. I still yeah. played the shit out of it. I yeah. just downloaded it the other day for free on Xbox live and i played it again but like same deal i love the game but the redundancy behind like doing the same grind over and over again plus the fact that your character's name is balder is a drawback yeah so with my rpgs I prefer to start as no one, right? When you start in The Witcher 3, you start as Geralt of Rivia, who is already famous for being the White Wolf. He is the Witcher of Rivia. He right. is, when you start the game, he is the Butcher of Blaviken. He has this whole entire backstory separate from you. Right. right. You have to right. put yourself in his in his shoes instead of you putting yourself in whatever character you choose. Right. Chooses shoes. You know what I mean? So that is really the reason why The Witcher 3 doesn't make my cut, although it is still a great game. It is what a about fantastic game. Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed is great. I love Assassin's Creed. Um my the favorite Assassin's Creed is Black Flag. Um, I feel like that's the best one. That's like the like I just you know it came is it out. The same at the right drawback time. for you though that you have a a character that's already named. And... Um, no, because I don't really see Assassin's Creed as an RPG. I see it as um, almost a different sandbox. game entirely. Yeah, like a sandbox um action game right although that's fair although it does have um it does have rpg elements um i'm sure some like especially as the, they, the franchise has gone on they're giving you more and more choice yes yes yeah. as the franchise has gone on they have tried to be more and more rpg you know because they have tried that's to be what like people want yeah yeah it is it is and um and I feel like the games are getting more and more successful, you know, like yeah. they're, they're doing a bang up job. They're killing it, you know? Right. Um, but, uh, but that's not up on your, your top it's five. not, it's not. And w one of the reasons why is because, um, the last one that I finished was four was black flag. 
And I can't really say why, except that I just thought that Black Flag was an awesome game. And I loved this, the, the pirate combat and um, the whole upgrading your ship aspect. And um, yeah, yeah. And I loved, uh, you know, like just going to every island and hundred percenting that island, and then going into and going to a new one. Like I like. Oh my god! Okay, you just you brought something up for me. What? Fable. Oh like, shit! I don't know if I can put it in the top five, but I Dude. love that that series. Of- Dude, it that is in. Yeah, that has to be an honorable mention, right? You already know Fable 2. I spent hours yeah. and yeah. hours 100 percenting every aspect of that game. Yeah. Yeah, we both did. Yeah. So, yeah. man, I love that game. Yeah. They need, <laughs> man, dude, they like need to make a they need to make a Fable 4, man. Yes. They really need to make a Fable 4. And they need to go hard. I know. Hard on and the they good need to versus get Lions head, They need to get Lions Head Studios because I'm saying they need to go hard on the good versus evil. Like everybody seems to be taking that shit out, and I love it. I well, love the whole like good, neutral, evil, the whole balance of Fallout. Oh man, there you go. There's one yeah. to throw in the mix. That might make your top five. Yeah, I think that's a, that was already in my head. That was I mean, already in my head. Like Fallout Three meets Fallout, RPG. I was thinking it was between Fallout Three and Fallout uh, New Vegas. Three. On honestly, between three, three and, on New Vegas, between only three because and New three Vegas, three is New Vegas. <laughs> what? I said three shits on New Vegas only because three is New Vegas. No, three was New no. Vegas before New Vegas. No, no. New Vegas is better than three because New Vegas is darker than three. New Vegas goes where three won't. The whole story with that woman who's burnt alive after being raped repeatedly by this gang of raiders yeah what like yeah that is some shit that would actually happen in real life if the apocalypse was upon us right Right. three would never go there three would bethesda would never go there obsidian would and that's why new vegas is better than three but i feel like The feeling that I felt, I mean, now you would call it nostalgia, but the the level of excitement and the the wonder and the adventure that I felt in three was all so much greater than it was going through New Vegas because New Vegas you know, just felt like you've more got a of point the same. There. You've got a point there. And I put so many hours in on three that by the time I played New Vegas, like I said, it just felt like a bit more of the same. It's not that I didn't love New Vegas. It was a great game. Yeah. But just that, the opening up of that world to me. That's what I was going to, that's what I was saying about Skyrim, you know, like after you complete that tutorial tunnel right after the dragon saves your life and after you go you escape through the cave when you come out of that tutorial cave and that music plays and you're introduced to the open world for the first time you look around at the forest and you're like you you look at the, the forest in front of you and the mountains in the background and you're like i can go anywhere i want right now you know and it's right. it's all up to me, you know? And that feeling alone, that wonder, that like, what does this game have in store for me? You know? That's what I'm that's saying an important exactly. thing. That is an important thing. And you're right. You're right. And that's why three 
easily for me tops yeah. New Vegas. When you walk out of that vault and that I mean, sunlight even, it even hits tops you in the four. face for the first time. Yeah. It even tops four for the same exact reason. Like I loved four. I loved all of the new kind of stuff that they built into four. I hated the fact that they took away the good versus neutral evil, all that. The the I mean they still have it a little alignment. bit. They st- they have it's it a, a little, little bit. bit, but it's not what it used to be. Yeah, I there's not like an that, actual. I love bar. that aspect of Fallout, yeah. just like yeah. I love that aspect of Fable. You know, just yeah. like I love that aspect of D and D. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Um, yeah. And there's a there's such a fine line between each of those things. And that's what makes it so awesome. Like w- when you're playing Fallout and you want to steal something, it's a bad thing, but you need that fucking cool thing or you need <laughs> that thing that you're like really low on bottle caps or stim packs or this, that, whatever. Like, but you're going to take a penalty for it. Yeah. But you needed it. So you did it. And now you got to work back to being good again and stuff like that. Like I yeah. really loved that aspect of the game it put an extra layer of challenge in there on top of just doing a regular grind yeah and yeah fable does the same thing exactly yeah especially fable 3 i mean i prefer the way that uh fable 2 did it as far as the good and evil where if you're an evil person like your entire visage changes that's what i love yeah yeah like like if you're an evil fucker then you turn into a demon you, you know grow horns and you turn grow into horn, horns your skin turns red all of that right you know? whereas in fable 3 like you the color of your wings change you know you get black devil wings instead of angel wings when you do a sword flourish you know it's bullshit Right, um, exactly, and that's what I'm saying. I wish they would have never let up on that in either game. Yeah, they should have hit it harder. You're right, right. Not given up on that. I don't know why it boggles my mind because I love that aspect so much. Yeah, yeah. The same they thing about they could have done it to where if you're an evil person, like your character just gets uglier. You know, just gets uglier. Skin gets darker. You start growing horns and like your well, skin they could red, do it I mean. so that you have more character types so that you have different ways that they get uglier like yeah. you could play a witchy type of character so you can have like a beautiful galinda type witch or an ugly wicked witch of the west type witch kind of thing you <laughs> yeah. know yeah. or you play kind of your standard male character like they have you know what i like your standard male character basically and you turn into like a good warlock or a bad warlock or you know yeah like that like an angel or a demon you know they they could play around with different um what's the word for it not just character types but uh tropes archetypes archetypes yeah Mm. yeah you know they put so much focus on like you can build your one character into these different paths they could just also do like different characters that follow different paths harder yeah you get what i'm saying like you could choose a sorcerer type of character that focuses more on sorcery and then that sorcerer type character looks different based on whether you're good or evil you know, then you could have a ranged kind of rifleman type character that's trained in these rifles. And then that rifleman guy looks like a pirate or he looks like a a lawman. You know what I mean? Like that. How cool would that be? Yeah. All right. So I have it. I swear to God, they need to put me on these development teams. <laughs> I swear <laughs> to God, dude. I know. It's just like someone just needs to listen to my ideas and then do them. You know, (laughs) I don't even I don't even need to get paid. Don't even pay me. Just listen to my fucking ideas, dude. Um, I I said for years that Pop Tarts should make cereal. Years. Really? Yeah, and then like two years ago, three years ago, they came out with Pop Tart cereal. 
<laughs> All right, so I have it. I have my list. Number one, Mortal Kombat. Number two, Diablo 2. Number three, Skyrim. Number four, Guitar Hero. Number five, Fallout 3. You're right. You convinced me <laughs> that, that um, the... And, I, and you just really just made me remember what it was like to play Fallout 3 because of that whole entire intro experience of being in the vault and then coming out of the vault yes. for the yes. first time is the same exact experience as I had in Skyrim where the dragon saves your life. You go through that fucking cave and you come out the other side of that cave feeling like, what is this world I'm about to go through? You exactly. know what I mean? I could do anything. And like the in this first world. time you come across a super mutant, or the first time you come across yes. a, a death claw, you're like, you're what like oh the my fuck god, what was the... that? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Especially yeah. with Fallout. Like at least with Skyrim, you're like, okay, it's a dragon or it's this. Well, or... no, I mean, yeah, with Skyrim, you're expecting some dragons. A dragon is the first thing you see. But, but I'm saying, like, you're not seeing much of stuff you haven't really seen before across every other RPG you've ever played. That's not exactly or true. Or... That's not exactly true. Like, you don't have, like, you don't hear about Spriggans or Wisp Mothers in uh, regular please, fantasy. Please explain. Okay, so a Spriggan is a creature of the forest, uh, a female archetype. Um, kind of like a uh, dryad in, um, kind of like a dryad in, um, magic. What is a dryad in magic? Oh, like a woodland type of character. Yeah, a woodland like in D and D, it's like a woodland tree walker. They move through the trees and they communicate with the forest and they protect the forest right so that's what a spriggan is yeah exactly it's a, it's a female uh in in skyrim all spriggans are females um and but the first time you see one you're like what in the fuck that thing just came out of nowhere and it is fucking me up like right like you you didn't do shit you just were walking through the forest you know and this thing just came out of the trees. Right. Literally was not there a second ago and now is there. And like, they're, they're like, you don't really want to fight a Spriggan until you're like level 20. Right. You know? Well, it's like um, the same thing with the death call. You're like, what is that thing in the distance? I'm going to shoot it. And then you shoot it and it comes and fucks you your face. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I'm gonna stay away from that thing until later in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay, Skyrim, that's an area I should avoid for a little while. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> in Skyrim, also there's the Wisp Mother. Wisp Mothers are like kind of a higher level version of the Spriggan, right? But you only see those if you're in the snowy mountains. Gotcha. And but the first thing, the the interesting thing about them is like, is like they'll like they will lure you toward them if you're a new player you know if you are, are a new player and you're like level 20 and um and you see this like glowy orb pass through pass by you you're like oh shit what the hell was that and you just follow it like don't do that <laughs> because it's a lot sometimes it'll be a wisp mother and like she'll just have all these different things and she'll shoot some ice shards at you and kill you just one hit you just wow. yeah and she'll look ugly also like the um the centaurs in fallout you know those like crazy like octopus crab things you know like half man half octopus crab right things in fallout that are like the most oh, yeah the most deformed ugliest thing and you're like what is that you know aren't they called fish something or sand somethings no they're called centaurs 
Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I thought I thought you were talking about um actually I thought you were talking about the uh those like the crap the crap mirrors. Like oh some, yeah, the Meyer lurks. Meyer lurks. There you go. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, those are crazy too. But the centaurs are right, right. No, the yeah, ugliest no. things Man. to ever. Um, just a quick video. couple more shout outs to video games and to gamers in general. Like, I'm sorry, I grew up a Sega kid, so I didn't have Nintendo and I didn't get to play all the Mario, and I wasn't a GameCube kid, so I didn't have like you know early days of smash brothers and shit like this i played these games but i didn't yeah, but play you had them a 64 because you played uh you played uh you know ocarina of time right so, uh, but i well that's because that, that I makes up one for point, it at one point i traded my ps2 for an n64 which was not a good trade but i played ocarina of time and... Ooh. dude I don't know, man. Uh oh, <laughs> we having some last minute. We're having a last minute one, dude. Uh oh. We are having we'll a last throw, minute. Throw out the throw out the game, and then. Uh... All right, the game is Spider Man Two, PS Two. Okay. Wow. I have no info. <laughs> I have no. No stores of anything on that game. Not a single. That video. was a great game. That was a really great game. The number one thing that made that game great was the swinging. Um, and I remember that you is, playing Prototype. Ah, that game was trash. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was fun for like the first day I had it, you know, but. But once you played Spider Man Two, it's just kind no, of more of the Spider -Man same. No, Spider Man Two was first. Mm -hmm. Spider Man Two was first. That's um, what I'm saying. But once you played Spider Man Two, it's just more of the same. <laughs> no, it wasn't even similar. Like, no, no, no. I, I because, felt like being in that open city concept. The controls. The the really important thing about Spider Man Two is the swinging. Like it was so much fun, <laughs> just to swing around new york city and i mean you know the whole entire city in that game was modeled after the real new york city like i i remember watching movies based set in new york city and seeing a landmark and being like oh that's in my game you know right right like oh that that's building cool. is in my game that oh especially that as a teenager thing. yeah yeah you know, that, that's in my game. I, I went there in my game. I climbed all over that as Spider-Man. You know, <laughs> like, I remember shit like that. Um, right. Do you think also, that would put that somewhere on your list, though? I feel like it should be on my list. I feel Just like it off should... nostalgia alone? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like... Is it good enough to bump off Fallout? I know, right? That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, it that's entirely your personal choice. I have yeah. no, no, no information to add or detract from your Spider-Man Two experience. I don't know. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it as equal. You gonna put it as a tie for number five? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, why so we're doing shout-outs to games too, like is Mario a tie Party for Fallout Three. Say again. Spider-Man 2 for the PS2 is a, is a tie for Fallout 3 for the 360. Right. Actually, you know what? One that I honestly should have on my list, but I'm going to I'm going to put it as a number 6 even. Um Pokémon, man. Po what 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 Pokémon? Fucking every one from the original. Game Boy? Fucking red, blue, yellow, green, ruby, silver, gold all that okay. shit or well yeah silver, i mean those gold, are definitely iconic ruby you know, emerald childhood, childhood all of games it. dude i loved pokemon yeah i've always wished that they made like a pokemon game like those for your phone you know well that's like, what pokemon go is 
No, it's not. It's not. It's, it's not, but you're right. You're right. I agree. I love like, those. They games. should have they should have a, like a legitimate like they should just redo I'm sure somebody can teach you how to jailbreak uh, your phone and turn it into a freaking Nintendo and put Pokemon on that there shit. Is, there is. There, there are <laughs> emulators. There are emulators. But a legitimate way to, I know what you're saying, yeah. to not pirate the game and actually yeah, they, pay for it. I mean, it dude, they would make so it. much money off of that. I don't know why they haven't done it, you know? Like, just update the graphics a little bit, you know? Right. And just throw it up there, you know? Right. It's a multi-million dollar buy app. That. I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Right. Just to have it. Yeah, just to have it. I'd play it too. I wouldn't just buy it <laughs> and play it once. I'd play the shit out of that. But um dude, yeah. I mean, God, I almost What are you thinking now? Actually, hold that thought. it i'm 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 putting it in the number four slot what pokemon really put it in the number four slot and i'm You're bumping, bumping down, out i'm bumping down final fantasy and i'm bumping out war rock okay and actually i love final fantasy 10 but i'm putting fallout up there man oh really i got to man fallout was i mean fallout a... is great like I'm not as into Fallout even now as I was then because I feel like they have not evolved it to make it as good as it could be. Yeah, I mean... And and to really stick to those three roots, man. Like, they could do it without making the same fucking game five times in a row. You know what I mean? But they've also done something else. Like, they've done the same thing that Diablo did. You know, they made it... I feel like... This is something that I've that I've long pondered about video games. Okay? And that is does the improvement of the graphics innately make things less scary? Because it yeah, leaves Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because it leaves less to the imagination. Um that that is something right i don't think it There's leaves some, less to I the imagination like, i think it feels less real than it did initially it's like with movies but how because it looks less real when it's pixelated but like with movies though like when that's the best you have at the time that's what you're going off of and then when you when you have better later it doesn't hold up the same you know like the exorcist and stuff like that like it just doesn't Dude, oh my god like it, it's fucked up <laughs> it's still fucked up today but it doesn't hold up as a scary ass movie like it did for its time yeah like back then it was fucking scary to see her, <laughs> her head around puking all over the room and shit like yeah. that but nowadays it just doesn't hold up like the same as i haven't games, i like, don't even i haven't even seen it since i first saw it but i i only have memories of it and those memories are horrifying right but if you went back and played like silent hill you wouldn't still be scared of it the same way you were back then and it's not just because yeah. you know what's coming it's because the graphics aren't as good as they were or as they are now you know it's not real you know what I mean? But back then, like, that was as real as it got. <laughs> you thought that that shit was about to come through your TV. I mean, not <laughs> really, though. I'm not really, though, because, the, I mean, you know, the technology of, um, you know, like, films was so good. You know, like, like um, scary movies like Around the time that I was playing um, Silent Hill 4 was the same time that Saw was out. Right. You know? And Saw 
was less scary than Silent Hill 4. But Saw wasn't a scary movie. That's true. It was way more intense than it was yeah, scary. That's it was true. dramatic. Yeah, you're and... right about that. Yeah, it was it was thrilling because it was a thriller and it was like suspenseful and cringy. That's ma- mainly the Saw movies are just cringy. So if you're talking about Saw, then and you want to talk about like that same era of scary movie, then you have to talk about like The Ring or The Grudge. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. The Ring is a good one. In which one. case, The Ring was fucking terrifying when it came out. Yeah. Yeah. It the doesn't ring, hold up today. Yeah. The Ring was scarier, scarier than Saw, but it wasn't like Way cringy scarier. like Saw. Did um, you ever watch The Ring? Yeah. You watched yeah. the whole thing. Yes. Yes. Oh, I've okay. seen. I've seen The Ring m- multiple times. Um, yeah. I haven't seen it in a long time. Granted, but um yeah it doesn't hold up but i feel like (laughs) you know being in control of your character is a big part of that but that that, i mean that furthers my point even because like the ring when she first comes out of the tv is literally like one of the scariest fucking things i've ever seen in in movies really and but it doesn't hold up so it's not scary to me anymore i mean of course you know but like I right, mean, but, shit, you say, of course, but there's there's scary movies that I won't even fucking try today. <laughs> Just because I stay up so late in this shit, man. I, I need to get my three hours of sleep in, bro. I can't be tripping on three that shit. Three hours? Well, well, whatever the time, like, if it's three, five, even six, six hours for me is rare. So if it's five hours that I get... I can't be tripping on that shit in my mind with the only five hours of sleep that I get. <laughs> Damn. So I try to stay away from shit because I know it's getting better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I heard actually that there's uh, this series on Netflix and I started it, but I didn't make it even to the first like really scary part. But there's some series on Netflix that's supposed to be super scary. I can't even remember what it's called now, but um god damn it scary on netflix yeah. super scary I don't know. Series. we'll have to look it up we'll bring it up another time <laughs> um, i don't know about scary but have you seen black mirror uh no no oh i know a god, bunch of people bro. talked about it but uh um, yeah dude you gotta watch it black kind mirror. of a series of a bunch of different things yeah it's kind of like an anthology right um where it's a diff like every episode setting, is a different the set premise. And setting is different every every episode right you know um there are no like repeat and like, they don't tie this- into each other right exactly right um, yeah i that's the same way like american horror story is right with each season yes right yeah i don't know i i wasn't into it any of that i know you love that too you've recommended that to me before um with american horror story the first anyway anyway i I like but yeah i mean we're getting off topic of video games much much off topic and we can you and i can personally go all night and change the topic 14 times and we'll still be talking at two in the morning just keep talking right um, so dude thank you for doing this with me Finally. Yeah, no problem, dude. Um, Anytime. And I mean, shit, we'll come up with the next topic and we'll come back with another easy two hours. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's you know, been almost two and a half now. Yeah. So but, for uh, anybody that's still stuck with us to this point, thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, we really hope that you enjoyed it for sure. And we know we did because we always enjoy each other's company. And yeah, we've been dying to have this conversation for a couple weeks now (laughs) so um yeah man thanks for being here everybody hang on run through your list run through your list one more time okay um geez call of duty second was league of legends third is diablo fourth is pokemon fifth is fallout 
Okay. And mine is number one, Mortal Kombat. Number two, Diablo 2. Number three, Skyrim. Number four, Guitar Hero. Um, and if I had to pick number one of that, it would be Warriors of Rock. Uh, number five, Fallout 3 slash Spider-Man 2 for the PS2. Um, I, I just cannot choose between those two. Um, yeah, so they share number five spot for me. Hell yeah, man. Well, again, that definitely wraps it up. And, yeah, man. Uh, fucking everybody just watch out for more like yeah back this is going to be the first one back for after like five months and you're going to see one every week even if i got to do like 30 minutes by myself about hey if you my you know if you can't find anybody i'll be on next week hell yeah buddy all right well thanks for being here not a problem dude later guys